Gamers hate these, but games still do them. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 terrible things all video games still do. For this list, we'll be going over some of the annoying, backwards, or just plain bad things that are still found in video games, despite frequent complaints from players and the gaming community. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to check out the full song at the link below. Number 10. Early Access for Big Names The early access model involves releasing an unfinished game for play by the public in exchange for pointing out issues with the game that need fixing. Although this is often a necessary business strategy for indie games, since they usually don't have the funds to hire quality control testers en masse, big game studios have also adopted this model, mostly for their multiplayer components. Gamers generally hate the increase of companies releasing unfinished or buggy products, and many see this as an exploitative tactic to cut out QA testing, with the overall fear that it's a slippery slope that will lead to fewer and fewer games being released, you know, actually finished. This land is full of scum. Number 9. Instant Fail Stealth Missions in Non-Stealth Games uh, hi, uh, hi, who doesn't love a good stealth game? What I'm really trying to say is that I love Metal Gear. Well, as fun as the genre is, gamers are less than enthused when it intrudes on other genres. It's become a surprisingly common mission in other games to have your character sneak around a given area, trying to avoid enemies' lines of sight. While nice in theory, in practice, this mission type rarely works well. For one thing, the mechanics of these games are usually not built with stealth in mind, forcing players to learn an entirely new gameplay style for these areas. But worse is the fact that these missions are often necessary to progress the story, and failure occurs whenever you're spotted, which will probably happen easily, necessitating doing it over and over again. Yeah! Number 8. Badly Designed Inventory Management Screens God damn it! Inventory management can be one of the most aggravating parts of large-scale games like RPGs, so it's all the more infuriating when the means of accessing one's inventory is poorly designed. Whether it's menus with tons of tiny slots, or few slots at all, having to use multiple buttons to equip things, or just a confusing interface, inventory management can very easily be screwed up. Overly complex inventory screens can prove daunting, and it can definitely take the fun out of games when we're struggling to understand what should be a simple feature. Number 7. Forced Motion Controls Foul ball. Most gamers still recall the Wii craze and how that quickly died out. Normally, motion controls are optional these days, so for those games, it's no big deal. But there are still plenty of games out there that try to force them in. To be fair, one such motion control style that has proven to be beneficial is gyro aiming, made popular with the likes of Splatoon, yet there are still just as many bad examples. While Breath of the Wild and Super Mario Odyssey were both incredible titles, they still had poorly planned motion control sections. This isn't a problem exclusive to Nintendo either, as Hideo Kojima also included motion controlled baby cradling in Death Stranding. Thanks, that's just what we needed. Virtual baby cradling. Number 6. Goofy or bad voice acting Who have thought about what? That a young buck like you could actually do the right thing and avoid getting his sorry butt kicked out the hold game. Me back. He told me to chill. Video games have long been notorious for some shoddy voice acting. While this may have been excusable for older or cheaper games, many big budget games today still feature bad or awkward performances from voice actors. We honor Jackie's father. 
and we honor his sacrifice by doing what he would do, tirelessly defend Earthrealm. Although there are some legitimately excellent vocal performances in games these days, they make the weird ones or just plain bad ones stick out even more. Even established actors aren't immune to giving bizarre line reads, and the most embarrassing of all is when people playing themselves in games manage to give a bad performance. Forget the rest, the fan, even the opponent. Handle your business, and the rest will take care of itself, all right? I guess so. Number five, bad companion AI. Take it easy, huh? Deep breath. You're really not welcome here. Ideally, we'd always be able to make our way through a video game with someone else playing with us. However, sometimes that's not always an option. For that, there's computer-controlled companions. Given how advanced artificial intelligence is becoming, you'd think that these companions would be able to exercise something approaching common sense at least, but that's not always the case. Companions that get stuck on small obstacles, run into gunfire, or just stand around doing nothing while you do all the work are still shockingly common in modern games. Is it too much to ask for AI that helps instead of hinders? See that gym wonders of technology. Make it a double. Number four, quick time events. You won't stop me. Press this button to insert action here. Quick time events have been around for ages, but it's a wonder they've lasted so long with how many gamers hate them. Although some QTEs offer quick button presses for a more cinematic finish to a fight, others are simply command inputs inserted at random during a cutscene. Critics of QTEs have derided them as offering the semblance of control over predetermined outcomes. After all, it hardly feels like gameplay if the outcome isn't based on the player's choices, but by when or if they push a button. Number three, unskippable cutscenes. I still can't believe this is real. Perfect. <laughs> cutscenes are a necessary part of a lot of video game storytelling. Still, some of them do tend to go on a while. And sometimes, if we've played through the section where one plays previously, either after completing the game once already or because we keep dying, it might be nice to skip past them. Say yes. Against all logic and many gamer demands though, there are still games today that don't offer the ability to skip over a cutscene. We get it, the creators spent a lot of time and effort crafting the cutscenes to tell their story. But sometimes, we prefer to focus on our own time and efforts instead of sitting through theirs. Again. Number two. Excessive collectibles. Collectibles are usually great. They offer a good incentive to continue playing once you finish the main game, and they give you the opportunity to explore areas you'd normally never touch. What they should not be used for, however, is to pad out the game's empty map. However, it does make sense for 3D platformers to have them since the challenge is usually the terrain itself. But for many open world titles where platforming isn't a central aspect, they make even less sense, especially if they take more time to find than doing the main game itself. What can make them especially infuriating though is if the rewards for collecting them all seem meaningless or they just poke fun at the player's expense. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure to go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, no local multiplayer. Playing games with your friends is generally a great time for all involved, especially if the campaign is built around co-op, but not really if you're playing like Super Smash Bros. or Mario Kart or any of these games that ruin friendships. Okay, it can be especially fun to have your friends over or go to their house to play together. Unfortunately, many games these days don't allow the option to play with your friends unless it's online. On 
Part of this demise in local multiplayer is unfortunately due to more demanding technology, as playing split screen also means having the console render the same screen twice, or four times. It's an unfortunate consequence of graphical competition, since most AAA companies prioritize that their games look prettier, then compromise them so that more people can play on one console. But it can be especially frustrating when you have more than one gamer living in the same house. Do you agree with our picks? Let us know in the comments. And hey, if you're a fan of the song playing right now, be sure to check out the music video for it right here.